What does it look like to trust in God completely? For Huila, this meant sacrificing a part of her finances. What happened next would take her faith to new levels? Pastor Saeed invited me to come to the prayer on the mountain. I'm so glad I came. The spirit was there, it is still there. I mean, it's just so fabulous. It was such an, uh, such an experience. Well, during the time of tithes and offering, I didn't bring any money with me and I don't have checks. So I said, well, you know what? I'll, I'll just write something on the envelope. So as I had my friend Athena write on the envelope, I said, I need, I said, do me a favor, write on the envelope because I didn't have my glasses. I said, put on there um, my account number and all of that. And she was like, okay, I can do that for you. And then as I got ready to write the amount, I wasn't sure. And then the Holy Spirit said, put this amount on there. And I go, okay. So I wrote it on there. And then I got ready to write, um, will you pray for me for this and pray for me for that? And the Holy Spirit said, no. Cross that out. And I said, well, what am I going to write? And the Holy Spirit said, just write obedience. I said, okay. So I wrote the word obedience in there. Closed it up and the bucket had already passed. So we had finished out service and Pastor Luke had talked about, he invited us all to, to really, really go proactive in this 21 days of prayer and this 21 days of fasting and, uh, and just believing and pressing in that God is gonna do something miraculous in your life. So I said, okay, well, I, I wrote that, I wrote that, uh, the, the offering envelope out, I said, okay, God, I'm just believing that you're going to do something miraculous in my life. And then I felt in my spirit, you don't need to ask for anything. To, you don't need to ask God for anything or pray for anything. God already knows your needs. Sometimes God just wants you to yield yourself to him because at this church, there are so many things that people need that are even more important than what you may need at this moment. I said, okay, well, fast forward, that was Wednesday. Thursday, I received a, uh, an open house for real estate. Then I received a check in the mail. This is so incredible. And it says, during a review of your account, we identified that we may have assessed an incorrect amount for repossession cost. As a result, we enclosed a check. We apologize for any inconvenience this may cause. The amazing thing about this, I haven't always had life go well for me. 21 years ago, I had a car repossessed. God gave me this money back 21 years later, which is today. How amazing. All because I went to that 21 day uh, prayer on the mountain. It is so important to be obedient to our pastors, to our church, and just to press in and just have faith and believe that God is going to do exactly what he says he's going to do. Well, today we get to talk to one of our amazing church members, Huila Covington. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Huila, I've seen you serve on the worship team in the front line for many years. You serve in our prayer ministry and something amazing just happened to you. And we got to see your story just now. But I want to know, what was your first response when God told you to give that money? Well, first of all, uh, when Pastor Luke was giving the invitation for tithes and offering, it's never, I never hesitate to give. I love giving because Malachi chapter three, verses six through 10 says that God will open the windows of heaven so big for you that you will not have enough room to give and um, you will not have enough room to receive all the blessings. And I look at it that we have insurance policies on our phone, on our house, on our cars. Why not have the ultimate insurance policy from God? And so I love to give. My question really was how much do I give? So when the Holy Spirit told me, when the Holy Spirit told me to write down how much I was to give, I did that. And as I said before, I was going to assign a prayer to it. And the Holy Spirit said, no, cross that out. Just, and I said, well, then what do I write? Just, and, he, and the Holy Spirit said, just write obedience. So I wrote obedience on it, like I said before. And I gave that offering. And it's been blessings ever since. So what did you do when you received that check in the mail? Was it like a, oh my goodness moment? Um, okay. It really was a, oh my goodness, because the very, that was a Wednesday on Thursday, I received a call 
from... Uh, the next day? The next day, the next day from um, the house that we moved out of, a tenant lives in there, and she called me and she said, hey, Huila, there's mail for you here, and I think one of them is a check. And I was like, what? <sighs> and she goes, I think it's from Wells Fargo. So she, you know, and she says, you come and pick it up. I picked up this check. I couldn't believe it. They actually said they overcharged me for something that they had done that happened 21 years ago. 21 years ago. 21 years ago. And they were giving me, they said, I'm sorry for the inconvenience. We would like to reimburse you with this money. That, that's how you know it's a God thing. Right. What business is looking 21 years back and <laughs> would refund someone? That's a totally a God thing. That how amazing. incredible is I've that? I've never had that happen. So, Huila, you are a story of trust, trusting God. Yes. Why is it so hard for people to trust God, specifically with their finances sometimes? Um, I think that, and, and I think we have a tendency to live in the moment and we don't see past our, situ our current situation. And we don't have the trust and the belief in God's word and that he's gonna say, he's gonna do exactly what he says. And so we have to be able to yield ourselves to him and be able to just say, God, I trust you. And I know you have, you know what I need and you're going to supply that need. So I think that could be it. And, and once you start trusting God and believing that he's going to do exactly what he said he's going to do, it, you just, you, you just want to yield yourself to him. And you should, because tell us what just happened this week. We filmed that a couple weeks ago and <laughs> something else just happened. Okay. Yes. Um, so, like I said, I did not assign prayers to that money, but God told me, I knew, the Holy, Holy Spirit said, God knows what you need. And I said, okay. So I went home and I wrote in my journal some prayers and I, I, and I also signed scripture to them. Well, one of the things that I wrote, well, we own our own business called Copper State Dental. And we were asking God to have this one particular uh, dentist this dentist's office go with our company as opposed to a larger company. Well, we just received a $100,000 check oh <laughs> for, uh, for our business. And that's incredible. But what's, okay, so it's not only so much about the money. Here's also another blessing. When you give, God takes care of every yeah. aspect of your life. He takes care of your children. He takes care of your health. He even takes care of your peace of mind and your it's emotions true. and your joy. He gives you peace. Well, my husband's truck stopped on, right in the middle of, I, uh, on Interstate uh, 143, I guess is the bypass or whatever. Well, he had the tow truck come and pick him up. The tow truck picked the truck up and the axle broke completely off. The wheel broke completely off. That could have been my husband. Yes. Kevin Covington, that could have been you, but it wasn't you. God saved you. God protect, protected him. So and, you're saying because you gave, God not only provided in your finances, amen. but in your family's health as well. Amen. What would amen. you say to anyone right now who knows that they need to give, but they're holding on tightly? Let it go. God can give you so much more abundantly, uh, more, over more than what you can even think. What does the word say? Eyes haven't seen, nor ears have heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of man of what God has in store for you. He is so much bigger than that little bit. And, you know, the Lord had explained to me, I was like, well, why didn't you want me to write my prayers on that, on that uh, prayer card? He said, because your church, Dream City Church, has so much more of a need than you have. I know what you need. He says, your need, your pastor, Pastor Luke, Pastor Saeed, all the pastors here, Pastor Tommy Barnett, all the pastors are praying for the entire church's needs, all the different Dream City churches. Yours is small. I've got you. So we just need to trust God that he's got us. He does. He does Thank you, Huila, for being here today. You're so welcome. It was a pleasure. Thank you for having me. You heard it from Huila. God can do so much more in his hands than he could ever do in our own. Sometimes we hold on to things and we say, I've got to make this last, I've got to make this last. But when you release your money, your time, your resources to him, oh my word, just watch how he opens up the floodgates of heaven and blesses your life. I've seen it time and time again in my own life. When I've given to God's kingdom, he has opened the blessings of heaven for me in my life. This is the one thing that God says we test him in. And I encourage you to test him in this today.
If you're looking for a cause to give to, go to dreamcitychurch.us. We have so many things that we are doing for the community. We would love for you to join us at Dream City Church as well.